You're listening to a special tribute to John Pierce on 873 2GB. John had a split personality. One was his radio persona. The other, well, it was warm, kind, caring. Those close to him knew him as God-fearing, a tireless worker for charity, and a recipient of the Order of the British Empire in 1971. I'm Tony Darwin, and I'm the president of the North Sydney Rotary Club. I've always admired wordsmiths, people who put words together and do them so cleverly. And uh, he was, uh, I just thought about uh, him, he had a great gift of fluency, and uh, I said that he was a craftsman at the podium. He welcomed people, and he had no fear of man or beast, and what he was able to do as a result of that was to welcome people with um, of all stations, so that uh, the time that uh, Peter Sinclair, the governor of New South Wales, came and visited the club, he was perfectly at home in his company, and uh, was able to entertain him in a very um, familiar fashion. And I think that, that he and Peter Sinclair were tied up with the famous Burr Cutters Club, which was a luncheon, luncheon activity, and I think it was a rather, um, rather pleasant affair. I think it would have been interesting to be in a fly on the wall with John Pierce in the Burr Cutters Club. There is no such thing as a crash landing. You either crash or you land. Right up until his death, his love of aviation never waned. He remained a freeman of the Guild of Air Pilots and Air Navigators and often displayed his love and knowledge of aviation on air. The only time an aircraft has to dump fuel before it lands is if it takes off and the landing is an emergency landing because an aircraft can take off with more weight than it can land with. That's right, yeah. So only, say you take off and you run into an emergency situation mm -hmm. where, say you lose one of your four engines, where you have to go back, you then dump fuel. I was under the impression you have to dump all the fuel. No, no, goodness gracious me, no. It's a safety procedure, that's what I'm... No, it's not a safety procedure. It's only a safety procedure if the aircraft is in a hazardous situation. In his latter years, way past the normal retirement age, John Pierce maintained his burning passion for radio. That's why he continued on weekends, demonstrating his sharpness and nimbleness of mind with his program, Ask the Oracle. Ask the Oracle is a program that, uh, well, if there's ever anything you wanted to know, and you, you're sort of too timid to ask anybody else about it, but you'd really love to know the answer without anybody thinking you're an absolute deal for not knowing, ring and ask the Oracle right now. You could not be more welcome. How do you do? Hi, John. G'day, sir. Two questions here. Uh, the first one, uh, the names of the stars in the Southern Cross. Wouldn't have a ruddy clue and I don't care. Next. Next question? Yes. The question is, when they discover something new or in invent something different, how do they know whether it's tomorrow or tomorrow? Because they're very strange people. So, a good start. Anything you'd like to ask, by all means, come and ask the Oracle. Can I ask you one question? Of course. What is the shortest highway in Australia? Oh, dear. That's a, oh, I, I bet I've got it. The Bradfield Highway. Correct. The Bradfield Highway is the shortest highway in Australia because it only starts at one end of the Sydney Harbour Bridge and finishes at the other end. You are really a brain stress. John, it, in Hyde Park there's a William Daly statue and he's got, he was a statesman, he's got PC after his name. What's PC? What's that mean? Police constable. Yeah, well... No, it wasn't. No, I just didn't know what it was, that's all. Privy councillor. Oh, that's what it could have been, yeah. Yeah, no, he was a member of the Privy Council. John, John Glen Mark in Australia, where a few states meet called Cameron's Quarter. Who was Cameron? He was a surveyor. Oh, good. And he was the guy who said, hey, guess where I am? Stuck his name in it, and, um, and that's the corner of South Australia, Queensland and New South Wales. 2GB announcer Peter Hand. Of course, we all know about the public persona. That was all theatre. He was always pulling the listener's leg or both their legs most of the time. It was never boring. According to his sister Dorothy, thoughts of retirement had crossed John's mind. He had been talking over the last year or so of retiring. He had plenty of hobbies, mainly especially old computers. But um, he'd say to me, ring up one day and he'd say, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to work anymore. I'd say, I've got enough to keep you busy. Yeah, right. And then he'd ring up about two days later, you know, says, I'd miss it too much. 
he really loved the work. John Pearce always treated thoughts of retirement the same way he would a pesky caller. He gave them short shrift. Could I ask you, please, uh, one more question? Go ahead. How many calls, I mean, you're doing this program, I mean, collectively, yep. for about 25 years. Yep. I reckon you're close to about 150,000 calls. I mean... Oh, at least, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, when you're having fun, yeah. who, who's counting? Sunday night, August 25th. And as usual, the Oracle is in great form on 2GB. Yes, good evening, John. How are you? I'm great, sir. Top of the world. Well, I haven't rung you for about 20 years, actually. Oh. I didn't even know you were still around until I turned the dial. Well, I'm not round. I'm more straight up and down these days. I used to be round. Good evening, John. Good evening, sir. Uh, I believe you made a slight error earlier. I don't make errors, sir. Well, I really rang you up to see if you could give me some assistance and just get me, give me a little bit of the oomph that keeps you going so good. Well, I've already told you the answer to a workaholic has given more work to do. Old people, when they get to about 65, they say, well, I'm a bit of an oldie, you know, and I'm about 65, and they don't want to learn anything new. They don't want to learn anything new. They don't want to get into computers. Those people don't want to um, get on the internet. Few of them do. They're wonderful, wonderful. They say, oh, no, no, there's nothing new I want to know. I've lived my life. I'm 65. Winston Churchill made his greatest speeches when he was 82. Tell me something you have learned. I challenge you that you didn't know at this time last week. But for a brief moment, the oracle becomes a prophet. It might have been spoken in jest, but I wonder, did John know something we didn't? This was to be his last performance. Now listen, how old, and j just a sec, I'm going to have a bit of a thing about this. How old are you? Seventy. Seventy. Isn't that awful? And I didn't know. And are you going to die? No way. Okay, now what was the question? Your grandson rang up to ask you, you poor old 70 year old. <laughs> I don't know that I'll get to see my way through to 8 o'clock tonight. I might die. I'm doing a commercial. What for? Money. Yeah, how do you mean money? They pay me. What sort of commercial? Let us know. Brilliant one. I'm sure it's brilliant. Hmm. Will be, but it's for money. No, I've, I've been approached by a a highly reputable organisation who have asked me if I would do uh, some telecommercials and a few radio commercials and a few other things for a year for them and I've agreed. But that's another story. Thank you, sir, and maybe you'll see me one day when the commercial appears if I make it by Monday. Good night. 2GB, Macquarie National News. For 9 o'clock news, good morning. I'm Rob Gooder. Veteran talkback broadcaster John Pearce is dead. Aged in his early 70s, he collapsed yesterday while filming a television commercial. His insults and his knack of stirring made him the radio man that many people love to hate. But today, no one denied that John Pearce was a pioneer of talkback. After a lifetime of broadcasting, he died yesterday, aged 71. Talkback radio hosts need one essential credential, the knack of pushing people's buttons. Sydney's John Pearce certainly had it, stirring callers with his often caustic and controversial barbs. After three decades on air, Pearce has died at the age of 71. Some very sad news this morning for this radio station and also for our listeners. One of Australia's longest serving and greatest radio broadcasters has died. John Pearce has passed away. And I'm told that he died suddenly but peacefully yesterday. A pro till the end, he actually worked his shift here at uh, 2GB on Sunday night. Now, were we prepared for this? I've got to say that I'm pleased that I told John Pierce what I thought of him, the nicest things, while he was still around. So John Pierce, last Sunday night was the last time. He didn't know, we didn't know, but we do have the memories of John Pierce. In a moment, the last word, a tribute to a great broadcaster. The finale in this special tribute to John Pierce on 873 2GB.